Right, okay guys, welcome to this week's video. Welcome to this race. So this race is the Zwift World Series race. It's on Richmond Loop. I think it's a new course, don't quote me on that. I'm not that bothered if it isn't. And I saw that it's over 500 meters in climbing, so this is gonna be brutal. Now there's not a lot of videos on YouTube of people doing this course yet, because I think it's only been out for a few days. I think it only started on the 29th, and today is the first. I haven't done a recce on it, so I don't know the route at all. I've got some good news. Hang on, I need to connect up. Let me quickly, so I just need to get connected. Connected, connected. Okay, good, right, we're all connected. Right, I've got some good news. So I'm just gonna go into my profile. So, I've lost weight. I now weigh, I'll show you, I now weigh exactly 94 kg on the nose. I weighed myself this morning. It's taken me ages <laughs> to lose 0.6 of a kg. But today is Zwift out. I've missed this. I haven't been on Zwift in ages. I need to get my shoes on. I am going to be on Zwift World Series Race 1. Start ride. Okay, right. I need to get on. I'm running late as per usual. So I've just got on the bike and I have three minutes. I've done no warm up. So this is over 40k of cycling, um, over 500 meters of climbing. I'm doing it in Cat C, so I'm not adverse to doing a bit of Zwifting indoors. Hopefully you're, you're not adverse to that either. I know a few of you have missed my Zwift videos, so I'm looking forward to this. This is gonna be good. Right, three minute warm up. I'll see you with 10 seconds to go. Oh man, I'm gonna die. Cat C over 500 meters of climbing i've got no chance three oh wrong gear wrong gear already come on gears 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 there we go okay i'm going to talk through this race uh, as a race right. review a good old-fashioned ryan condon's with race review uh, where's my fan need that on so as i start my fan up and get off the line two things that were different on this start line firstly i was quite surprised with how low-key and conservative everyone was off of the start line. even though i'm being dropped i'm still only doing 300 watts so um 300 plus watts just to keep up with the lead pack which is always a good sign for a cat c race i really appreciate that and uh yeah no one doing any silly watts okay chill out ryan chill out going to the front jesus so even doing 300 plus watts i've ended up hitting the front too hard Because we're downhill. Everyone knows that this race is going to be a tough one. So they're all, they're all taking it really easy, knowing full well that most people are going to get dropped on the climbs. And that those that are good at climbing are going to be able to sail off into the distance. So far, I'm liking this route downhill. All good. Got a feeling what goes down must come up. So I'm going to enjoy this peloton while I can. And then the other thing that uh, annoyed me off the start line is my bike um, does this thing where unless I start the gears, unless I move the gears on the start line, they stay disconnected. So I have to move them before I kick off. And I forgot to do that. I've got a feeling I've forgotten something other than my Zwift legs. But like something isn't connected. So I hadn't forgotten anything. Um, just my nerves. I haven't been on Zwift for ages and it feels good to be back on Zwift. Okay. 2%. 1%. Okay, flat again. So I remember doing this course, I didn't remember at the time, but I remember doing this course many uh, months ago now. Um, it was in a Zwift, just, just a normal Zwift race. And um, yeah, I remember how brutal and tough it was. Get that cadence up, Ryan. And there was a climb that we're coming up to now where I think it peaks at 7 8%, maybe even a bit more. Might even be pushing 10%. And I just got absolutely annihilated on it. And it's probably going to be no different. I say probably, I know the outcome of the race. So it's going to be no different today. Um, remember, this is Cat C. This isn't a Zwift racing score race. This is Cat C. And uh, this is my 10th Cat C race, which I'm uh, really proud of. First of the big climbs. Let me put that fan on high. I'm already hot. So as I'm climbing this climb, it has been made exponentially easier by the fact that i have lost weight since the last time i did this course i don't race a lot of really really hilly courses um if, if i do race races that have hills in them they're normally just one punchy climb which i can concentrate on just beasting up and hoping that i don't get dropped whereas this course for, if you just look at the uh, gradient if you look at the elevation map it will show you you know it shows very clearly that this is a really hilly course oh my god 11 percent 
I'm dropped. And I already know I'm dropped now, even though it looks like I can put something in to catch back on. You know, I'm at my maximum here. I'm trying to get my cadence up, which is helping slightly. My cadence is really low on climbing. Um, I know that. I know that I'm probably better off sitting down and spinning than I am. But it, it feels good. I like standing up in the saddle. I'm dropped. Now, the thing is, there is a descent here, which I didn't realise. And if I had to put a dig in now... I could have latched back on. I just assumed that this climb, it was either going to be flat or it was going to go straight back up. I didn't realise it was going downhill. I now had a choice between trying to catch, which again, for the third time of saying it, I should have done. I should have tried to latch back on, but I didn't. I need to wait for the group behind. Um, so I opted to allow the group behind me to kind of form around me. And then we could all kind of, uh, my plan was hopefully try and stick together around the rest of the course. Now the good thing about this course is what goes up must come back down so I was able to enjoy some of the descents <sighs> and then we go straight back up again with another 10% incline this one's particularly brutal because as you go around the corner <sighs> it hits 21% I have done this route before 21% percent this is the point i remember doing the course it's a brutal start to a route i will say that i'll give it that so as it starts to flatten out we're now at two percent um you know i'm able to spin my legs a bit freer i'm able to get the cadence up which is good i always aim to keep my cadence in the 90s that's always the plan it never really happens um but i always try and keep my cadence in the 90s this is where i put a bit of a dig in i want to latch back onto that group if i can i know there's a descent coming and I know that if I'm pretty much with them as we go down the descent, I'm going to stay with them then because we've got the flat section. Now, this is the brutal cobbles, which is absolutely fine going down them. I can go really fast here, maybe even super tuck. However, I know from looking at the route map that we have to come back this way. This is at the end of the route, at the end of the 40 odd K of cycling. We have to climb back up this, which is mental. Whoever designed this route is a sadistic psychopath. I've missed this. I love Zwift. I love Zwift. I don't want pedaling. Downhill. Super tuck. So yeah, I have. I've massively missed Zwift. This has been... Uh, uh, Zwift has made a huge difference to my weight loss. It's, it's really helped me with my fitness. Um, and it's fun. You know, it, I'm able to do... I don't know what I'm doing here. Can I just say, for the record, I saw the group ahead and I actually thought I could catch them, and I should have saved my energy. <laughs> I don't know why I'm even attempting it. I'm not gonna catch them. But they were only five seconds, four seconds ahead, and I, sh you know, I know. <laughs> I've got no excuse. But yeah, I have massively missed Swift. Swift has had a huge impact on my fitness. It's such a great training tool to have in my house. Um, but more than that, it's more than just the convenience. It's also how accessible and enjoyable Swift is when you're riding. You know, you, you and, and like a race within a race so i'm now dropped from the lead group the lead group has shot off i don't even know how far ahead they are i'm dropped from the chasing group so the chasing group have shot off and i'm now in amongst uh, a group of individuals who are of a similar sort of caliber to me i would say we're kind of doing the same watts per kg roughly give or take there is no way i'm going to be able to keep up with anyone who's doing five watts per kg plus i'm going to look at swift power now actually okay so as i'm looking at swift power now there are 43 riders that started this race and there's 27 on swift power so that's about 16 riders that didn't make it onto swift power it's great to see that the, the person that came in third weighed 95 kgs and that really does give me confidence in knowing that it isn't just about weight i mean the winner was 85 kg and then the second place person was 76 kg the third place was 95 and then fifth place was 93 so it's great to see that there are heavier riders in cat c so at this point we're just on the flats there's not a lot that happens between now and the next climb, I'll stick with this group. Okay, we have a problem. This is a long hill. This is where I get dropped. So the problem with this climb, the biggest problem with this climb, other than the fact that it has anything other than 0% gradient, yeah, is that it goes on for what feels like forever. So psychologically, climbs like this seem 
to beat me so I, in my head rather than in my leg. So even though I'm dying in my saddle, psychologically it's really tough to see that this road, and I know from racing it before, this road goes on forever. It just just disappears off, to, off into the distance. And I know that I'm going to be doing 3, 4, 5% for God knows how long. This is like an FTP test. This is like the worst kind of TTT, just trying to get up to the top of this climb. And I'm trying my best just to keep on. Now, I know that I can put out more watts in this, so I should have stuck with them. I should have stuck with this group, 100%. And I, I don't know why I didn't. I kind of just resigned myself to the fact that I knew they'd sail away. And I didn't need to do that. I could have stuck with them, which I'm a bit annoyed with. I'm dropped. Ah. So then for the second time in this race, I've ended up being dropped. A group that I was with is now sailing off into the sunset. I've got no chance of catching them back up on an incline. I am a little bit annoyed that I allowed this to happen. I'm completely dropped. I'm in no man's land and yeah, annihilated. This is a tough course. So obviously I resign myself to the fact that I'm gonna let the group behind me catch me. Um, and I take back what I said about kind of finding like-minded individuals that are same caliber. I should have stuck with that group. I'm really annoyed I didn't stick with the group. One of my strengths, and this is something which I need to get a lot better at, I need to recognize what my strengths are. My strengths are not climbing. I love climbing, I enjoy climbing. It feels like if I do a race that's completely flat, I don't wanna do that, but I'm very, very good at recovery. My fitness, current fitness levels afford me the luxury of being able to do, and recovery is one of them. I don't like talking about weight, but Zwift makes it very difficult not to. Unless you're very light, then if you're like me, quite heavy, then climbing isn't gonna be your forte but that doesn't mean you should avoid it because you, what you can do tactically with a climb which is what i do is you power into them hitting the climb faster than those around you will give you a slight head start draft becomes when you're heavy on a climb people say to me stick behind people use their draft but draft becomes less and less important the more you're climbing because the slower you're going and then when i get to the top i know that my recovery is going to be quite quick know your maximum heart rate but also know your endurance heart rate i don't know what the technical terms are my point is that if you know what your endurance heart rate is which is the heart rate that you can sustain your maximum heart rate you can sustain so for me that's 170 now 180 pushing 185 is my sprint in 190 my heart rate now is 164 that's because i'm going up but i know that i can i can endure 170 175 for probably about 10 minutes maximum as soon as i am on a climb and i've got people passing me like i have now i'm able to put some effort in i can put a bit of a boost in i know that i'm not on my maximum endurance heart rate even though i'm dying um and i know that i'm able to endure that and i can keep up with them i could really do with getting to the top with this guy but I don't think I'm going to. Rather than focusing on how I'm feeling, I'd rather focus on my heart rate and knowing that I'm able to push it a bit more, knowing that I'm able to endure that before my mind collapses. <laughs> your, your mind will give up far sooner than your body. I've always said that. Oh, you fell off the bike. Your mind will give in long before your body does. Your body is capable of much more than you give it credit for. Ah. The descents on this course crack me up they're as extreme as the climbing obviously what goes up must come down but me and this guy next to me now so this guy in the blue yellow and orange oh, shirt wait, with the no. afro he i think is quite heavy because he seems to absolutely fly down the descents like i do and the guys that are with us who are obviously quite light they have to keep pedaling because if they don't pedal we zoom past them like stones being dropped out of an airplane um we've hit this climb again <laughs> this climb is bonkers Please. See, as you can see, this guy in orange, he is feather light. He just absolutely sails away. Zero effort. I say zero effort. That's really hard. It's really harsh to say. These avatars, when you're all Zwift, I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but when you're Zwifting, these avatars give you the impression that no one else is putting anywhere near as much effort as you because their legs are spinning, high cadence. They've obviously got a much better cycling technique than I do. There's me grinding away at 60, 65 RPM. 350 watts just to keep up with them so i put a bit of a burst in i don't want to get dropped this early on the climb i still got another couple of hundred meters to go until the top so the thing is i get a lot of advice from people saying to me well ryan you know you should race in races that are flat race to your strengths you're going to be stronger on the flats i don't necessarily think i am 
I think I'm just, <laughs> I'm going to get dropped on the flats as much as the climbs. The difference is on the flats, it's a different type of race. As you saw from the start of this race, when they when riders know they've got a lot of climbing ahead of them, they don't you know drop stupid watts and then go mental for the whole race and it become a smash and grab for 25k so it means i'm not in an endurance race from the very beginning which i'm not adverse to but it's a different race it's a completely different race i've done flat races now i think i did a flat race in cats and i did make it to the end with the lead pack but they had they all had so much energy that whether i got dropped within the last 200 meters or whether i i got dropped to you know 20k from the finish line i'm still getting dropped but they had so much energy because they didn't have any climbing that the cat sprinters just dropped you know they were doing 10 watts per kg in a sprint you know i've got no chance there's no chance with my with my six 700 watt sprint the other thing that i want to aim for in swift which i haven't had yet i'm talking about sprints is i haven't had orange numbers so on the right hand side where you've got the watts per kg i haven't had that light up orange yet i've never had that that's on my bucket list to be able to lose enough weight that i'm able to drop orange numbers so at this point i started pressing the wrong buttons someone put a comment on screen that says ryan i love your channel which i really appreciated so i wanted to give them a reply in in chat instead of doing that i changed camera angle and i'm not really sure how I did that. I panicked a little bit because I did that before and I wasn't able to get it back. I was able to get it back in this instance. So I'm just going to fast forward this bit because I pretty much just stayed with this group over the flats. Everything's all good. And then we hit the brutal climb again. This is where I'm psychologically thinking to myself, okay, right, whatever happens, do not get dropped. Now, the good thing is this group, I think, is a mixed bag. So you can see the guy that I mentioned before in the blue, yellow, and orange with the afro slightly behind me. I think he's quite heavy. So his cadence has dropped, which means his avatar's got out of his bike and he's now grinding a little bit more um, than he normally does. That's why the avatar stood up. I'm starting to grind here, but sometimes I prefer that. Spinning, I'm not very good at spinning. I need to get a lot better at spinning, I'll be completely honest. My cadence isn't the greatest out of all of my cycling technique. I think my cadence is probably the thing I need to work on more than power. I do massively, when I cycle, I do massively rely on my raw power. I talk about game mechanics. Game mechanics is obviously knowing the draft, knowing the route, knowing when to punch into a climb, knowing, knowing where the climbs are. Um, they're all the game mechanics and then there's another aspect which is actual physical cycling tactics things that you can do to get you to the end of the race in a good place to be able to finish and maybe even sprint and one of them for me is my cadence so i rely too much on my raw power which means that i probably burn matches that i don't need to burn too early on like now you know the guy that's gone off the front here that's got two seconds on us i know that we're able we, we will be able to claw him back as soon as we hit the top so we're on the flats now i'm going to fast forward this bit because nothing really happens between now and the next climb now i was starting to get worried here my cadence has massively dropped as you can see my heart rate's at 171 my cadence is now in the 40s which is appalling i'm completely grinding ah guys guys please Make it stop. I'm conscious now that I am getting, I am pretty much for all intents and purposes dropped. Now, if this was the front of this Cat C race, I'd first off, I'd be a miracle that I'm still there um, and I'd be. I'd be checking my settings to make sure that I hadn't accidentally put 9kg in instead of 94kg. However, at this point, I would be saying I'm dropped. However, I know that these guys that are in front of us, they are super light. And I know that if I'm able to put a dig in, there's another climb coming, and this again comes back to game mechanics, knowing the route. I know that if I can use this guy's draft, who's now super tucking, get a small recovery in. If I punch this next climb, this is what I mean about bursting into a climb, pushing into a climb. If we use speed here, so this is the part This is the part I'm talking about. So if I use speed here to my advantage, and I push like I now do, even though I'm grinding, if I push into this, this is where I'm talking about using the climb to your advantage. So the speed of the descent or the speed on the flats into the climb gives you a small Mario Kart super boost and it does it on every single climb. So if you can imagine, I've now closed the gap down from you know a few seconds to be able to close it onto this group. Knowing this climb is a relatively short one, if I can just keep up with them, then I'm good. My heart rate's at 175, pushing 180 now. Now this, this always cracks me up. This is a sure sign that the cyclists around you are lighter than you are. You don't even need to look at Zwift Power to look at their stats to know this. I pretty much, with a little dig there, I pretty much don't need to cycle to keep up with them. So if I've got forward momentum like I do now, so 50 plus 
kilometers per hour if i've got that forward momentum i pretty much stay with them without issue whereas they need to pedal that's a clear sign that someone's a lot lighter i don't know why i'm pedaling i don't need to because i now reach them if i had stopped pedaling i would have caught them regardless so now look i'm not i'm not pedaling at all minus six minus five percent they're having to pedal furiously that's a clear indicator that someone's a lot lighter than you going downhill. I mean, I know I'm saying stuff that pretty much 90% of all other Zwifters understand, especially in Cat C, but this is all new game mechanics that I've been learning over the last 12 months. Now I've shot off the front because I was pedaling, I didn't need to. So I'm just gonna fast forward through the flats here to the next climb. Okay, right, we're on the death hill. Ah. And I'm already getting dropped. This is the death climb, apparently. And the death climb is that long straight road where you just goes on forever. So this is just an FTP test just to get to the top with the lighter riders. So it's at this point I realized that you've got the guy that's in the yellow, red and green and the guy that's in orange, they're both quite light. So I made a conscious decision to increase my cadence here. This isn't just me being fatigued and trying not to use my legs as much. This is genuinely an effort to try and increase my, my RPM. Now I will say, just before we get to the top of this climb, being with this group was great. This is what I mean about this Zwift being accessible to all. Even within a race, within a race, you know, the race, it, the whole race is done, I'm not winning. So that race is over with for me, and I knew that before I even started, and that's not a defeatist attitude. There's no way I'm gonna be keeping up with faster Cat C riders that have a much higher FTP than me, have, uh, you know, they're a lot lighter than me. There's no way I'm winning, basically, is what I'm saying. But to find individuals within this race, like this, which are much more accessible for me, when I say that, when I say accessible, what I mean by that is they seem to be at a um, similar level to me, are probably doing them a disservice they're probably a lot more capable they're just they're just out on the zone two ride so i'm able to enjoy this race with them and we're pretty much having a you know a five-man race okay so we just stay on this circuit for a short while i'm just going to fast forward just skip through this section here now this guy here the guy that's with us now the one that's just behind me who's in my draft he now goes bonkers at this point <laughs> um he decides uh, for some strange reason to put a sprint in. I don't know what this guy is doing. At the time, I thought it was a strange. He drops orange numbers. Now, if you can see there, what's he doing? 10, over 10 watts per kg. Now, it transpires he did that because he has to leave. I mean, I don't know why people join races that are over 40K to then have to leave before the finish line. I don't really get that. I'm happy to let him go. I can't catch that. You know, he's done 75% of this race. I'm not sure why he can't finish last 25%. I'm not really sure about that but he ends up leaving shortly. Obviously because he wanted to finish and leave, he wanted to bait a sprint off of us and no one took the bait. He can go out on his own. I just want to finish. So it was at this point that he then dropped a message saying he's got to leave thanks for the company. So, you know, I will give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he was just on his lunch break. Okay, so it was at this point I realized this is the start of the big climb up to the cobbles. Look alive, Ryan, come on. I'm trying to get my cadence up. I'm trying to drop my gears just so as I can I can increase, but I'm just grinding. I made a mistake here. The annoying thing is I also lost connection at this point as well. Gears have dropped. Change gears. So I messed my gears up. I lost connection for a brief second, which messed me up. I, had, I was in completely the wrong gears. I was spinning out, putting my, I was turning my legs, but they weren't producing any power, um, which meant I then started panicking, standing up, putting it into a high gear, which I shouldn't have done. I should have just kept it at this. I should have been doing, you know, pushing 250, trying to get as close to 300 watts as I could, high cadence, I'd have been okay. Because my gears dropped out and because I saw them sailing away, I then started panicking. I started getting out of my seat just to get to the top. So this bit was really strange. So getting to this top here, knowing that the climbing was nowhere near finished because obviously I've done this route in reverse already, they just absolutely flew off. I mean, we're on a descent here and I should have been able to have kept up with them I tried to put a dig in here. <laughs> this is me trying to put a dig in. My power output versus theirs doesn't seem to be equating. I'm trying to do four plus just to just to use the descent to my advantage. This is how much of a difference draft makes. I mean, this is this is a prime example of how draft makes a difference. Nothing. I've got nothing. I just can't just can't keep up with them at all. Now I should have been going into this climb ahead of them. Is what I should have done. Because look, this is how much of a boost powering into a climb for me does. I go right to the front. If I was able to do that with them on the descent, then this would the end of this race with this group would have been very different, but I just wasn't able to. And I spent all of my energy 
trying to catch them on the descent without draft, which meant I had nothing for the climb. And then they disappear. They absolutely, I don't know if they rendered out of the game for me on screen, but they just completely disappear like that. Gone. That's it already. 13 seconds ahead. Unbelievable how fast you can drop someone in this game. So I've just fast forward to the end of the race. Got 400 meters left. I'm completely spent. I'm completely burnt out. Maximum effort. I'm trying to get my cadence up, but my watts just aren't reacting to my cadence. Um, my heart rate is has been at 175 for just too long. It is actually coming down. I think I was in excess of 180 at one point trying to get up the climbs. So I am in zone five, maximum effort. And then I just think to myself, this guy has sailed away. I've got 200 meters, always sprint for a finish line. This guy thinks he's about to beat me. I've got someone to aim for, why not? Who needs a heart rate anyway? So I drop some spicy 450 watts. And I cross the finish line. Ah. That's it guys, end of my race. 28th, what did I finish? 23rd on Zwift Power. State of my hair. Ah, that was a good ride. I enjoyed that. Good to be back on Zwift. That's a proper workout. Thanks for watching this video. Oh, I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. Alright, I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit the shower. Oh aye aye aye.